Audrey's golf cart here, which is kind of the standard for small uh, pack uh, setups. We have 12 batteries, and these are all old batteries, but they've been, uh, we've had them in the cart, and they actually are starting to, starting to become very uh, uh, equalized to each other. Now, last time I took the voltages, we were pretty well charged. Uh, and everybody was reading exactly the same voltage down to a hundredth of a volt, which was pretty impressive. Of course, we have regulators on each one of these. And uh, our first thing that what I do when I'm doing voltages is I'll take my, my phone and turn on the recorder. And then I just turn on the recorder. And I read over the voltages and I say them out loud. Battery one is 3.17. 3.22, All right, this is a very simple battery charger that we have. We have our bridge rectifier here. We're charging a 48 volt battery. We're charging up to about 60 volts. I have a heating element that just is a 120 screw in the light socket type heating element, probably about 10 amps. And I have a little, uh, it's called a uh, digital relay or a solid state relay. Uh, and this one is AC. So this relay here is being controlled here from the uh, from a little power uh, supply that I made that goes to our battery management system. There's our bridge rectifier that turns the AC into DC and uh, this chokes off our current so that we're only getting so many amps. Now the problem of course with this very simple setup is it it does not vary the amps at the end of the charge. It doesn't trickle off and hold the voltage at one level, but it's uh, very simple. I have inside uh, the uh, battery box also, I have another one that I made to control another charger, but the same idea. I have a big capacitor on this to uh, so that we don't have the thing flick off and on, off and on, that it'll give a little time between cycles. What I have is uh, the I'm running it off of the power of the whole pack. I have the whole pack, and then I have a Zener diode to give me uh, 12 volts, which is a voltage that'll run our relay but also won't burn out our little modules when they open up. All right, well, here's some rough drawings uh, just to explain what our system is. Basically, here's our AC power coming in and it goes through our uh, solid state relay. And that's one of these things. Uh, of course, on the, on our solid state relay, we've got our AC part, which it's labeled there, and our DC part. Our DC part is our control system. Our AC part is what is being controlled, our power. So our AC uh, relay controls the AC power going to our bridge rectifier. This is our bridge rectifier. Out of our bridge rectifier comes our DC. And uh, this is what a bridge rectifier looks like. As you can see, he's got one little corner that's, uh, and that's our positive corner. So positive is on that side, negative is on that side, and our AC goes across the other two. And it's labeled, sometimes they just label the positive. So out of our, uh, out of our bridge rectifier, we run through this heating element and that heating element can be anything from that one that we watched on the other video to something 
You can even use uh, whatever you got laying around that that's uh, got a heating element in it. You can even use a uh, heater like that. Anyway, whatever resistance you put in there, that's going to cut back on the current that goes through your battery. And there's our battery right there. Now the good thing with this setup is that it, with the resistor being high enough that uh, with even a short across here, it won't burn out our bridge rectifier or our solid state relay. We can then use this to charge up even dead batteries or, or whatnot. But that said, this resistor is going to control how much current goes through here. Our next part of our setup is for coming up with a power supply that'll give us uh, a fixed voltage like 12 volts to run our sensing and our BMS switch to turn it off and on. And what I'm using is here's our 48 volt battery. I use the Zener diode that goes across here, which gives us 12 volts. I have a 100K resistor that's going to block us down to about 5 milliamps. So we'll have 5 milliamps available across here at 12 volts. We don't want to have too much current or we could risk burning out our Zener diode. These are half watt Zener diodes. Uh, so half a watt at, at uh, 12 volts is basically about uh, 100 milliamps, about 80 milliamps actually. So five milliamps puts us, uh, you know, keeps us in a good range and we don't use a lot of power. This is constantly going to be using that five milliamps. Uh, that drain will be on there all the time unless you put a little switch in here. You could put a little switch in and then you'd have to turn this on and off when you needed it. And that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Put a little switch there. Now you can turn this off and on. All right, now that you've got 12 volts, we come over here and this is how we hook that up. This is our solid state relay that we were talking about before. This is our voltage regulator for uh, lithium batteries. And I have one of those right around here. All right, so here is all our uh, parts set up and working. I got our solid state relay with our 120 volts coming in and it goes out there to our light over here which just signifies that it's working the other end of the AC is hooked together here is our uh, regulator which is basically just our control system to turn uh, to supply this with uh, 12 volts although we're using a little less now up here I got my two power supplies going. Uh, that's our three volts, which is what's coming in on our regulator. Now, <coughs> you'll notice as I turn up the power on the regulator, our little light that's blinking, or staying bright now, will start to blink. And then at some point, we'll turn off the light because it says, oh, the voltage is too high, 3.9. The regulator's blinking away and it's also uh, making some heat on that resistor. And it's turned off our charger. Now, as the voltage comes back down, the light will stop blinking and our charger will come back on. Of course, our problem is with this setup is that once we get close to the threshold, we may end up with the light blinking off and on. So we have a little solution for that. All right, across our <coughs> input terminal, our low voltage side of our optic coupler, I've put this big 4,700 
microfarad capacitor. And this will slow down our switching speed on our uh, how fast we turn the charger off and on because we don't want this to get into a fluttering mode where it turns it off and on, off and on, and, and, and oscillates back and forth. Right now I have my terminal off, the light is off. As you see when I hook it up, there'll be a short pause before it comes on. There our light is on. Now you'll notice when I take this off, the light stays on for hmm, that amount of time. That's why that capacitor is uh, charging up. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you add this capacitor across there is that this capacitor has to charge off through our regulator. So it's possible that we could overwork our regulator if we had too big a capacitor. So I've put a little resistor, a, a 1000 ohm resistor in here. Of course, in your system, you've got a uh, current limiting resistor off of the 48 volts across the 12 volt diode. But this right here will give us, I've unhooked it there, and as you can see, the light is still on. We got, yeah, we got our 15, 20 seconds of lag time between it. And we have, uh, we don't have a lot of parts.